In the last series of videos, we were able to finish the uh, the user CRUD, uh, and now we're gonna move on to actually creating the task, so the task CRUD. Now this is broken out into a couple different describes. So we had just a single describe in our tests for just all of user CRUD, and that was a big, huge thing, and we created several videos across that all. Uh, but now we have a describe for task CRUD, and then several different describes for tests underneath that. So the first one here is gonna be creating a task. Uh, so let's go and enable all three of these tests at the same time. So in our API test, I wanna go find the task CRUD. I'm not gonna put a skip or anything else on the, the user test. We're just gonna put an only on this describe create a task. And when I do that, it's gonna automatically skip the user ones and only do the create ones for us. So let's go ahead and rerun this. Uh, do, oh, I need to like, you know, not skip these two. Uh, let's see, test crud, describe only create a task. Okay, I need to. Remove that skip, remove that skip, and that skip. Okay, let's save you, and let's try this again. There we go, that's what I was expecting. So we are successfully skipping our user's CRUD tests, and we are only running the create uh, task tests and all three of them are failing, of course. Uh, let's jump into this first one here. So should be able to create a task. So, well, it's running into a 404. So if we take a look at that, so should be able to create a task. Uh, it is attempting to uh, go to create a task, which is a post to our base URL, so API v1 uh, tasks. Uh, and that is gonna be a post. So let's go create a route for that. So under routes, I'm gonna create a new folder for tasks. Let's put a mod in there. Okay. And close you down for the second, for a time being. All right, so this is gonna be create task. RS, and let's mod you. And in here, let's create just like um, a uh, 200, just sort of like a, a plain basic um, uh, route handler. So pub async function, uh, create task. Uh, you'll come in like that, and let's get you added in. Okay, so in our routes, where do we want to put this? So routes, we have, okay, users here. We'll do tasks, create task. I want to put that um, above this middleware because we have to be authenticated to create a task. So do a route uh, slash API v1 uh, tasks. Our method router, uh, this is gonna be a post to create task. Okay. Expected comma, not a semicolon. All right, all right. Uh, let's, um, okay, so you, we should be able to get beyond that next part of the test now. So instead of a 404, we should now get something else. Okay, so should be able to create a task. Uh, okay, so we get a result um, that created task. Okay, so the result from this, we should be able to get an ID. So we're, we're missing the task ID. Also, we need to know what, what type of task we're taking in, don't we? Let's ask you. Uh, 
where is that? That's, oh, this is all user, user cred. Okay, so task cred. Here's our new task. So we have priority title and description. So that's, that's what we're taking in at least to begin with. Uh, so let's create that in mod here. I'm gonna have my types, just like with users. This is gonna be a request task. Uh, this should be a struct request task. Uh, we are going to derive serialize, deserialize. I don't know if we need anything else on it right now. Uh, request task. Okay. We have priority, title, and description. I can. Let's just take all of you and throw you in here. Okay. Um, these all need to be public, I believe. All right. Priority. Um, that's going to be a string, right? Now, it could potentially be a character, but this not a character in the database. I believe this is like a varchar 4 or something like that, uh, which does mean if I try to pass in a character, I don't think that'll work. I think I have to pass it in a string. Uh, so therefore, you're a string. Um, priority. Now, the other thing is we don't necessarily know that. I don't think the priority is required. Wired. So maybe this should be an option. All right. Title is absolutely required. And this is going to be a string. Uh, description is optional, uh, but is also going to be a string. So an option a string. Okay. That's, uh, that's what we're going to be taking in. Uh, let's head into our create task here. Um, okay, so we know we're going to take in, uh, well, definitely the state. Um, and I think we're going to need the user here too to, to associate the task with the specific user. So we know we're going to have the extension. So singular, like last time when I use extensions, uh, we'll have our user. That is extension. Uh, and that's a model from user. Okay. Uh, now we're also working with tasks here. So I'm going to rename this. So users model as user model. User model. There we go. Uh, we need our database. That's going to be a state. State DB. It's going to be a state with a database connection. Um, okay. Uh, we also need the JSON coming in. So that's going to be the request user. So we want JSON. Uh, we need the request user. Uh, and that's going to be a JSON request. User. So mods task. Oh, request task. Not not request user. We want request task. There. Request task. There we go. Okay. So we take you in. That has to be the the end one. Um, we are going to return a result with a status code. Um, well, is that true? I don't think so. We're going to return a result. Uh, we we're creating something. So we want to do a status code of 201, which is different than a 200. So that's going to be what a tuple. Um, I think we can maybe just do like a response. and an app error. All right, let's see if that works. Uh, okay, expecting um, result. Oh, we're not, we're not returning anything. So if we get to this point, 
Um, uh, we do know that we want to return the actual thing, but if I just return a status code, that should be okay right now. Uh, so let's return an okay uh, status code of a status code of created. There we go. Uh, mismatch type expected a, ooh, okay. Do I want to do something like that impulse response? I don't think I can do that. Oh, expected a trait found a type alias response. Ooh, yeah, okay. So I don't think I want to do that exactly. What did I do in my, uh, was it middleware? I don't remember if it was the middleware for this. Uh, oh, it returns this response, which we get in, which is not exactly the same as what we're doing right now. So uh, now I do know that we can return a tuple. So instead of this, we could return a tuple. And the first thing would be a status code. And the second thing would be what like the, the actual user we're responding with. Uh, we know we're responding with the user. So let's go ahead and create that too. So pub struct uh, response task. Keep on going back to user. I'm gonna derive uh, serialize and deserialize. Um, we know we need things like the ID. Uh, so that's the what pub ID is gonna be an I64, I believe. Uh, we're probably gonna need the title uh, that's required and a pub description, which is gonna be an option, option uh, string. Okay. We'll start with those. Okay, so then this is gonna be a JSON with the response task. There we go. Um, that being said, I don't have that other one yet, do I? So we'll just go ahead and do the to do for now. Okay, so uh, we've gotten past, so we have access to the user, uh, we have access to our DB, we have access to our request user. Great, let's go ahead and create a new uh, a new task. So that's gonna uh, create mute uh, new task equals. Um, I guess this doesn't need to be mute, although we can also by, um, yeah, there's a couple of ways we could do this. I'm going to do new task equals to me tasks from the database. We want an active model. If we fill the match, okay, uh, that gives me this, okay. ID, so that's gonna be part of the, the default. So I'm going to default, default that. Okay, um, priority. We know we're accepting the priority in this one, so we wanna set you. That I believe is an option in a database. So we're gonna do a set. Okay, import you. Uh, that's gonna be a sum. Um, although, do I have to make it a sum? Because I already have an option. I might be able to just take this from request user dot priority. Um, title needs to be a string, so that's gonna be a set, and then request user dot title. Um, completed that. Uh, this should be the default, which should be a none. Uh, description, we have that one. This is going to be a set uh, request user dot description. Uh, deleted that. Again, we're not going to create deleted ones. Uh, user ID. Um, right. Everything. Oh, I think this is an option too. So, yeah, we have a sum. Oh, it's an I32, not an I62. This is an I32. Uh, okay, sum, this is gonna be the user.id, okay. Uh, is default. This is definitely gonna be false, right? Because when a user is creating a task, it's not a default task. It's gonna be, well, just their own task. 
Uh, so it's going to be a set to an option bool. So um, now I can't, I think this is a none. I think we want to set it to none. It, it feels weird, right? Because I'm not setting it to like some false. I'm setting it to none, so it's null. And the rest is default. So actually, is default can probably be set to that. And the, the rest of the, okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so we've created our new task. I want to save it now. So new task dot save. And it referenced the DB. Uh, we, we do want access to this new task. So that uh, this is now just going to be the task. Um, we have to await you. We're going to map error. All right. Well, ePrint, ePrint line. We have error creating a new task. Uh, we will create an app error. So this should be an internal, okay, this should be an internal error um, if we get to this point, right? Because if it fails in like the JSON destructuring, that's going to be like a 400 or so, I believe. Uh, we'll see though. Uh, okay, so status code. Uh, this is not bad request. This is internal server error. And our message is error creating task. We'll see if we have another error we have to do. Okay, so that gives us an active model. And now I want to turn this into just a model. Uh, and I remember that there was a way to do that. And I completely forget what that was that was not like an as model um there was oh try into model try into model that gives us another result so we can do another um map error uh so let's see that's going to be error let's be print line this um, okay, so this is error uh, converting task after creating it. And we'll create an app error new. Uh, this definitely is an internal an internal error. Okay, uh, this is error creating task again. Okay, we now have our, our task as a model. Okay, uh, which means I can now create a response task. And I also remember that um, in the test, it's looking for this, let's see, where, where exactly is that? Data.data. .data. It's looking for in data.data. .data. Now we're using Axios behind the scenes. And I just happen to know that Axios adds a data in on its own. So an extra data is from us. So just like with the user, we're going to want, so we have a response task. We have just like a response. So I'm going to do a pub struct response data task. Uh, that's going to take in a pub data, uh, which then is going to have the response task inside of it. All right, let's derive serialize and deserialize. Okay, there we go with you. Um, so this response is actually not going to be the response task. This is going to be the response data task. Uh, but we do want to create the response task here. 
So let's do that. So that um, so response it's going to be equal to okay. So response task. All right, ID. This is going to be the task dot ID title task dot title and description. Okay, you're all happy. Then uh, at the very end, we're going to return. Okay, now we can finally do that. Okay, so. If things are if things are good, we're gonna get a tuple. Uh, inside the tuple, it, we're gonna get the status code of created. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, otherwise, no. Also, with it, we're gonna get the message, which is gonna be a JSON. Uh, we are going to get a response data task with the data being the response. All right, we don't have any errors, uh, but that was a lot of code. Let's uh, let's see if this works. So should be able to create a task. Hey, that's one of these. Um, although strangely, should be able to create a task is still failing. Uh, we passed one of these other ones though. Should not be able to create a task when not logged in. Okay, well that's working because of that middleware. So should be able to create a task. What what happened here? Um, oh, we expected this to be an A. We received undefined. So okay, we successfully got the task back. Uh, but the priority isn't cre uh, isn't correct. So this is data data. So priority in here. So you are. Oh yeah, I forgot the priority. Uh, priority, uh, that's going to be an option with a string inside. Priority is going to be task dot priority. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, it still failed. Uh, what happened? Okay. Oh, yeah. So we got the priority now. Uh, we got the title correct. Um, we're missing uh, completed at. Uh, and then we can we can see some of the other ones coming up here too. So let's handle those. So we have uh, pub completed at. Uh, that should be. Um, well, that's going to be an option, right? And I think it's going to come in as a string, or we can do it as potentially a, a date time. Let's try a string. Uh, we also have the description. Okay, we have that one coming up. Uh, we expect you not to have the property user ID, and we expect you not to have the property is default. Okay, so just just that one. Uh, completed at. So we want you to be task dot completed at. Mismatch types expected an enum string found a chrono date time fixed offset. I wonder if I can turn this into a string here too. Although, because you're an option at this point in time, we're gonna have to map you, aren't we? So map. Uh, so we have this time and I want to turn like time to string. See if that's the right type of string. Hey, that was the right type of string. So uh, we should be able to create a task. Uh, we should not be able to create a task when lo not logged in. Excellent. Uh, we cannot create a task without all required data. 
So right now, if we're missing data from this, expected uh, missing task title. Okay, so for missing the task title, we just received undefined, but we want to have a missing task title here. So, hmm, how are we gonna handle this? Right now, we're having JSON just attempt to uh, extract out what that data is, and I think if we're missing that, I think that gives us a, a 500. Oh, and the 400 right here, it's going to be a 500, I believe, uh, internally as it, as it crashes. Okay. So we probably, unfortunately, need to uh, create a custom extractor for this. Okay. So we need a custom extractor to get the tasks. So let's create a new one. This is going to be a... Uh, get uh, maybe um, new or create task. Now, is it? No, because like when we do updates or something, then I need, yeah, it should just be like a create task extractor. Yes, okay. Uh, it's gonna be a mod. Great task extractor. All right, now it has been a little bit of time since we did that lesson on ex custom extractors and we have Axum 0.6. Let's go take a look at this. So we're gonna go to crates, Axum. I want extractors. Uh, okay, so see extract for more details and extractors. I want a defining custom extractors. Okay, so you can also define your own extractors by implementing either from request parts or from request. Implement from request parts of your extractor doesn't need access to the request body. Uh, I do need access to the entire request body. So we're gonna do from request. If your extractor needs to consume the request body, you must implement from request. Okay, excellent. So it's gonna be some kind of struct with this and then for a validated body. Okay, so that's that's what we're doing here. Before before we get too far in, let's, uh, let's create the struct. So pub struct, this is gonna be, um, I mean, it's like, I guess it's validate. So validate uh, new task or create task. And you have this coming in as bytes here. Do we need that? I'm not 100% sure that we need the bytes. Uh, so validated body, where, where are we using like self with like zero? I'm not seeing that. Oh, that body equal bytes from request. Map error and response and response. Uh, okay, self body. Uh, do we want that to be bytes or do I want that to just be the body? Uh, I don't know if I need other things. What's the time your request body type will be body body? So my body B. Oh, which has to be like a custom type, which we don't know. Okay. We don't need to do anything else. Okay, so let's 
let's try this for a second and uh, we'll see we'll see how it feels. I, I think I might need to add in something else. And we can go check check the lesson too um, uh, if if we really need to. Okay, so we're gonna do impl from request for validate create task. Um, we also need, let's see, where was it? It was near the top. Okay, so we add to where is audio wrapping extractors, common extractors. Okay, so implement from request. Oh, defining custom, there we go. Uh, Implementing from request parts, and we want from request here. Uh, this from request, we might need to go into it. Uh, but okay, so you're gonna, oh, so they're using this async trait here. Async trait is, uh, oh, from axim, okay, so we can do that. Impl, S and B. So I believe that's going to be send and sync. Ah, it's state. Okay, so we have state and B is the body probably. So S and B from request. So impl, we have S and B. That's the wrong. We want that S. Okay, uh, for this thing, let's implement you. Okay, type rejection. Let's make this an app error. Okay. We have no errors right now, so that, that's a good sign. Okay, so we have a request coming in, which is this axim HTTP request B. Uh, we have our state which is this life zero uh, S, okay. Uh, they do this core pin. Uh, I wonder if, because I forgot to do the async trait, let's see, that was above the impl. Let's bring you in. Import you. I'm going to delete the contents of this body and we're gonna try again. So, Save you. Oh, you don't. Okay. So Rust, uh, Rust Analyzer can't actually auto-complete this for me anymore. Uh, well, that's fine. Let's, um, let's restrict these so with some wares. Uh, bytes. Okay. So you need, where do bytes come from? Oh, bytes was this thing. It's from, okay, so we need bytes here. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. The bytes didn't need to be that thing. This is coming from Axum, isn't it? Import bytes from Axum body bytes. Uh, you, okay, missing, implement, re missing that rejection. Okay, so let's come down here. Let's copy all of you. Okay, rejection equals response. Um, it could, I'm just gonna make it specifically an app error though. Uh, okay, from request. You need that type to so import request, uh, import into response. Uh, couldn't convert the error to an app error, so we have to do a map error. Oh, uh, we already have this. Map error into response. So I'm gonna do a custom one here. So we have our error coming in. Uh, so this is 
let's um let's do our e print line so this is going to be error now what is happening this is getting the bytes so getting bytes uh in custom create task extractor And the, okay, pass in the error. Uh, and then we're gonna create a new app error. Okay, our status code is gonna be a, this is probably an internal server error. And our message is just some generic, like, you know, internal server error. Okay, so we're happy there. Um, this error doesn't implement debug. Oh, well, that's a first. That's a first for us. So this error doesn't implement a debug. Well, that's too bad. Uh, can we like two string this? Oh, there's no two string on it. Oh, that's that's really too bad. Uh, so I think in that case. Uh, I can't really debug this out, so I'm just going to leave that as the ePrint line, and I'll underscore this error, and we'll have to figure out, if this happens, we'll have to figure out how to read that error later. Okay, so we're now at this point. So the body is in bytes, though. And it's like, just do the validation, which is not really all that helpful. Uh, we want to uh, let's see. We want to grab the information. Like we want to grab the body. Uh, let's see. Bytes from request. Uh, now I think it actually said like, can we do an extractor in here? Like a a JSON extractor. Yeah, so this one doesn't have a tuple type on it. I wonder if I could do like JSON in that. Uh, so let's see, rejection, infallible. We have that async trait uh, from request. Request B. Okay, so we do that. But again, it's not doing anything in here yet. Accessing other extractors and from request. Okay, this is what we want. So this is from request parts. Is it going to be the same? When defining custom extractors, you often need to extract. Uh, where would that be? So like here's header. Okay, equals typed header. From request. So equals typed header authorization bear from request parts, which is this same function. Extension state uh, parts. Oh, this parts. Oh, right, but that's that's just parts. I want. The other thing, uh, which they don't have, request body extractor extractors. Doesn't have as much. It's like body streams coming in, and then running the extractors. Uh, so I don't, I don't think I can add in. Let's find out. So if I if I just try to throw in like a JSON here, so we use Axum JSON. Um, oh wait wait no, um, we just don't use bytes, right? So we then say, oh JSON from request, don't we? So JSON from request state, and so this is body is going to be JSON. Mismatch types expected. Uh, okay, let's let's throw a to do in here. 
uh json so we probably need the type that you are uh this is going to be oh but but we're going to run into uh we're going to run into the problem where we don't know exactly what like i don't want it to um have the error yet i want like just the body so that's just this json right Uh, so I need, uh, I might, we might need to go back and take a look at what we did last time. So not back, uh, not project in data, uh, we had our source, we had our routes, our custom JSON extractor. What did we do here? So we had our async trait. Uh, we had where HTTP bodies and static. Okay. So we had a little bit more going on here. We didn't have the bytes thing. Uh, okay, so type rejection. This is essentially the app error. Uh, async function from request. Okay, so we did a request in state. That was it. Equals this result rejection. Let JSON. Aha, okay, so it was JSON user request user. Oh, and then we're using this validation library, which I completely forgot that we had. Uh, this validation library is from this uh, uh, called a validator. So we want to use that instead of just plain old survey. So we need to go grab that. It creates, what is it, validator? Validator, that's, that's it exactly. Okay, let's, uh, let's pull this in. Uh, let's see, this is back end test. Let's create another terminal for project solution. Cargo add validator. Now card, uh, we probably want to derive. I probably want to derive. Yeah, we're going to want Drivable impulse, so we can do this type of stuff. So I'm going to do a dash F for derive, uh, which also brings in the validator derive. Excellent. Um, we don't need phone number, and I don't think we need the UNIC. Uh, so that should be good for this. Okay, so uh, we want to validate. Or was this? This was in data. We want to source routes, task, custom one. Okay, so we're going to need to create a custom new struct for what's coming in with this, which I think is replacing this one. Um, let's go take a look at what we did before. So in here, we have this request user, which is exactly what we're inputting off of that and we're deriving deserialize debug and validate on it. Okay, so we're gonna do that. So this is not just validate create task. I'm gonna change you to be, uh, this is validate, well, actually, you know what? That is validate create task. Uh, I don't need this bytes though. I do need this to be an actual struct with stuff inside of it, don't we? So, what do we need coming in? Well, let's go take a look at in mod, in request task, we need you. Throw you in there. Okay, so we have you coming in. If we take a look at our validator, uh, debug, validate, and deserialize. So uh, we'll derive debug. Now we don't really need debug unless I want to print this out to the screen, but maybe we do. Validate and deserialize. Uh, for each of these, we want to do this, something like validate email for if it's an email address. 
I um okay, so priority right now is just a string, right? So for a string, we want to validate length minimum one. Uh so for priority, it's probably like combination two. Um I don't need a custom one either. I don't need to sort of rename this either. I just want this uh the length okay so priority validate length uh min one and then can i do max equals one two so priorities they're just one character okay uh, let's see, length, okay, that, that seems to be fine. Title, uh, we need you, we need you to be there, but maybe you need to be an option here so we can handle that properly. So you're an option, that. We'll do a validate, uh, all right. What are you gonna be? Uh, I want you to be, I guess like it's required. How do I say that you're uh, the validate method returns a result in the case. Oh, I think, I think I don't need to do anything special. I don't think I need to make this an option. I think it will figure it out. So we don't have like a minimum number of characters or anything else. The title can be whatever. And then the description is also an option, okay, of a string. I think that's gonna be fine. Okay. So we have we have you uh, coming down. Now this this next part, okay, so we're missing we're missing something. So we don't need this bytes. We do need we do need something else. So if we take a look at our custom JSON extractor again, uh, we had the B is HTTP body. Now the reason for that is because we did the request extract. Okay, so that's how that's how we got stuff out of it. And then it yelled at us because we needed all of these things. So I'm just gonna take you. Uh, replace all of you with that. Uh, and we're just going to start over with this. So we're going to let, um, let, it was like the JSON body. Uh, so we can do that as a request dot extract. There we go. Extract. Um, what do you take in? apply an extractor to this request. doesn't really say anything in here. I think that we can do just a JSON uh, user, or is it JSON type, uh, which is gonna be what? Um, uh, this is this validate create task. It seems like it's not happy with this. Uh, let me see. Let's go back and take a look at it. What what did I do? I did j let JSON user. Oh, it's a TurboFish syntax. That's what I need to do. TurboFish syntax. And so it's let JSON user equals. Oh, and this is the request user that we're getting out. I don't need to do that. Um, we should have the user as a middle, uh, so like our middleware probably put it in there. It's not in the, it's in a layer so we can grab it out that way. So we grab you out. Um, oh, we just have our errors that come in and the errors are available. Uh, oh, we do we. 
do the uh we run validate on user don't we from this oh and this was validating a user like this okay so never mind we do need to do this so this can be let json equal okay so let json equals request that extract and then we extract that okay so let's do okay this is gonna be let this is gonna be a new task right so let uh json our task equals request that extract i don't need to do that entire thing or turbo fish this is going to be json with the uh validate create task which probably could also be a self uh you need another thing there all right expected a semicolon okay cannot find HTTP body import you and import you mismatch types expected extract um oh pin so we have to await you uh expected result with this okay so we have to map error I will do an ePrint line. This is error extracting, um, I guess, like new task. We'll create a new app error uh, with a status code of this should be an internal service internal internal server error uh and this is just like something generic went wrong okay there we go now we have our task which is this uh validate create task which means i can now do the validation which i believe we can do with just um running validate on it so uh, we can do something like task.validate. That returns a result. Now with nothing on end if it went okay and only bad things if it went bad. So, okay, how do we do this? Uh, this returns a this and then a validator validation errors. Okay, so then uh, if let errors error okay so we extract you out if we have these errors we're going to do an early return but we probably want to set our return code appropriately depending upon what this is um now i don't know exactly what you are if i try to re re um just like send this back. I don't think it'll work the way we would expect it to. Uh, test wise, what are we expecting? Uh, okay, so if we're missing task title, if like the title was not there. So what's that? Missing task title. Uh, we should probably just let's try debugging it with these errors. And uh, we'll just let it crash with that to do. That'll be fine. Back into here. We're going to npm test and go take a look at this. As soon as we hit this um, debug, we should see something, something printed out. Maybe. You failed. You know, putting... Putting the extractor into use might be helpful. So we have this uh, validate create task. And where are you? This is going to go into create task. Uh, this consumes the body. So I do want it to eventually. Uh, this says request user again. That's that's wrong. 
Uh, I'm going to want to make this like a request. Um, a validate create task like that. Oh, and this is going to be maybe like task, something like that. Uh, request task. Let's not worry about any of this. I'll just throw a to do. That'll make it compile at least. All right, test again. There we go. Okay, so we get this. There it is. Missing field title. We have that. Okay. So now that we can see exactly what this is, uh, we should be able to create the custom error message and send that back if we're missing the field title or whatever else we're missing. Okay. So we had to cheat a little bit, but uh, we're, we're getting there. I do need to put a cut in though, because I'm running out of time and I need to head off to work for today's session. So uh, we'll put in a cut and then we'll continue working on this. Uh, in a little bit. So see you in a second. All right. Uh, I am back. It is the next day and uh, I'm ready to uh, continue working on the create task. Well, tasks. So uh, reminding myself where we are. Uh, we are, let's see, running the test. And okay, we get we get the wrong message when we're attempting to create a task with the wrong title. And obviously it's not creating the task yet because we're doing the middleware to sort of validate that we can't, can't do the right thing. So uh, this is the wrong message here. Now, if we go back, I have, uh, have the validator open. I believe somewhere in here is something about a custom message. So let's search for message. Uh, to, okay, validator error has the message in it. So we should be able to get the message, I think. I think we, I wonder if we can get a two string out of that. Oh wait, I vaguely remember, there was a two string. Uh, message and code, okay. Each validator can take two optional arguments in addition to their own arguments. A message, a message to go with the error. Okay, and then a code, but we're not worried about the code. Uh, we just want message, which is going to look like, so validate message equals message string. Okay, that's, that's what we want. So inside of our create task extractor, here is this, okay, so validate, uh, length. Okay, so this property string. Now, is there a better? Yeah, validate length minimum. Okay, so we have like a message that goes in here then. So message uh, equals, and then this would be just something, right? So um, priority must be a single character. Okay, uh, I don't know exa if that's exactly what it needs to be. Um, validate. All right. Now, do we have like a string? What are our validation options here? We have those custom ones, which we could use. Range length. Oh, I think required is one of them, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not seeing something like a, a string, but I think required is Yeah, validate required. Okay. So we'll do a required. Um, I think 
I think you might even have to be like an option or something. But uh, okay, let's let's try this. Validate required. Um, and this wants to have expected missing task title. Okay, so let's let's try this one. And I should be able to extract that out here. Okay, so we have our errors coming in. I believe that I can get the errors in some kind of um, array or vector. Uh, let's see. So if I do errors dot, what can we what can we do with this? Nothing. You don't have any what type of error it is, do you? Not not in here. Okay. Let errors let error equals errors dot oh you you're not showing me anything. Um and let's see. Hmm. I don't I don't think there's a kind or anything else like that. Uh, let's go see. Okay, let's put back the debug. If I do that, oh yeah, I still don't get access to it. What type are you? Oh, you're nothing. Do I have an error? I do have an error. Okay, validate. Um, Unreachable code, no method name validate, found for validate create task. Okay, so you're you're upset. Uh, do you need to be an option? Something like that. No, that's not it. Uh, are you upset with this message? Entered unreachable code. Okay, maybe it's you. Oh, it was you. Okay. So that that was interesting. Um Okay, so if I do validate. Did I use the wrong validate? Uh okay, so required message equals that again. Oh, now it likes it. Okay. Well, that okay. That was that was my problem the entire time. Okay, so now here we can get errors. Oh, field errors. That 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 sounds familiar. I think this gives me oh it gives me a hash map, which is not necessarily what I want. Uh, but I can do into errors. That also gives me a hash map. Although we can go through this. Uh, errors also a hash map. Okay, is there anything that gives me a vector? To string just gives me a to string. Let's let's try this and debug out what you are. All right, so let's rerun our tests again. And okay, so we have this title missing task title. Okay. We wanted Oh, you just completely failed. Cannot read properties of undefined reading data. Uh, oh, probably because I have this to do. And so it doesn't return anything at all. Uh, it just, okay, I could do a rejection here. So I would want to do a uh, an early return of an error uh, with an app error inside. Uh, status code. So this is going to be a status code. Uh, bad request for a 400. Uh, and then the message, let's try errors to string and see if it likes that. I'm guessing it's not going to uh, because it has that entire um, field name on it, which I don't think that it I don't think that it wants. Okay, so if we do that. Let's try the test again.
Uh, yeah, okay, so I have this title, missing task title, and I just wanted the missing task title. Okay, so close. Uh, we can get the errors out. Uh, okay, so let all the errors, if I shadow that, errors dot. Now, if I do, oh, field errors gives me, oh, a hash map of the correct value and then a vec. Oh, interesting. Okay, so a hash map gives me this thing, a hash map with a stir. I wonder if that's the field value. And then the errors, because there could be multiple errors. Okay, let's try that. Is there anything else that gives me an errors? Uh, doesn't look like it. Errors itself gives me a hash map of stir validation errors, which I'm not exactly sure what the difference here is. Uh, we have a vector of that and a validation error. Okay, let's try errors first. Okay, so we have this hash map of stirs. We can loop through this and then maybe return just the first one. So let's try a four uh, let error in errors and sort of see what we got. Uh, I don't need to do a four let. What language is this? Okay, four error in errors. Uh, we can maybe do an early return. Uh, for this error to string it, maybe. Uh, what are you? You are a, oh. I potentially don't care about which one that is. Uh, the two string exists for reference, errors, validation kind, but it's trait bounds. We're not satisfied. Uh, Oh, it has display. It's required for display. Hmm. Okay, so that's the wrong one. So let's try the field errors. Okay, so you're this a vec of validation error. Okay, so you're a vector of validation errors, which means we need to do another loop through here. So uh, this is not looking great. Um, I could map this or, or reduce it. Uh, let's just, just to see if we can get it working. We're gonna do for error message in error dot, I guess error. Maybe I'll just call this E. And I want to now return out of here. So just give me the first one. I guess I could probably also do the first. Like, give me first. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so return error. Uh, and then, then I want return this as E. Let's see what it thinks this is. Uh, that completely crashed. Did that run? Let's find out if that ran. Run you again, and let's see if we get this debugged out. Okay, so we got the not yet implemented here. Uh, and on line 46, we got, we got that. We got the two string there. Uh, I just, Missing the task title, which is this one here. Okay. I mean, it's super close to, to exactly what we want. Uh, I feel that title missing task title. I, I could also like just strip this off. 
and and send that on its way. I feel like there's there that's not the appropriate way to do it. I wonder if there's a better way, like maybe not two string, maybe uh into errors, maybe no, we we tried that one is empty. The two string is the one that made the most sense. Field errors potentially okay. So if I did this field errors here, I'm curious about what we actually get. Ah, uh, look at that. Okay, so inside of each field error, we have an object, which is this validation error with a message inside. Okay, so, all right, so we have field errors. So we, we get these field errors. Let's uh, name these field errors. I want to basically get the first one of these. If let some, I think if I do that, we get the first error. So field errors, uh, let's do an iter first. Oh, okay, that's, that's not, that doesn't work the way I expect it to. I guess we can loop through it. So for field error in field errors, Now you are going to be a tuple with the key and the value. Uh, the key is probably going to be the field itself, which I don't think we really care about, and then the actual error. Now this error looks like this, and I want to reach into it and get the message. So I want to return error status code uh, bad request. And the error message. If you have a two string, that would be great too. Oh, because you're you're a vector now. Okay. Right, you're a vector of these validation errors. Okay, so I need to get the first one here. So we can get error dot first which gives me this option. Now, if we have an error, I think that we can, we can assume that there is one. So let's try this. Uh, if we unwrap you and then, we, yeah, there we go. Then I can get the message like that. So let's put you in here. Oh, and you take an app. Okay, so this is an app error. App error new, please. Maybe? Uh, the trait bound, oh, uh, and then I want this to be, we can do like a two owned gives me, so it's a cow. I want to deref it. Can I deref you? Okay. Oh, because it's an option cow. Okay. So do I need to unwrap you? And then to string. Cannot move out of shared reference. Okay. So, so let's uh, unwrap. Do I want to clone you at that point? Yeah. Okay. I guess technically it works. Let's find out if that if that does it. Uh, so what do we get back? Ooh, okay. So we should not be able to create a task when not logged in, and we cannot create a task without without all the required data, which means we're sending back the correct error message. Okay, so we got this part is is working now. Is there a better way to do this? Uh, there probably is. Uh, it is working because uh, we know that like if there is an error, 
So we know that there is at least one error, uh, which means that I feel safe doing all these unwraps here because, be well, because of that. So I could put a comment in going like, um, feel safe unwrapping because we know there is at least one error and we only care about the first for this API. Okay. So just a little message to myself in the future in case I need, like, wh why did I do this? Okay, uh, but it makes the test pass. So we got to that point. Now we want to return, we want to return out what, um, what this validate create task is. The problem here is that our title is now an option, uh, which means it would be a sum title. And I don't necessarily want that. Everything else being an option is okay. Not the title. Uh, was there an incoming? There's this request task that looks exactly like what I want though. So I think, I think what I want to do is then turn this into a request task. So we are going to, uh, oh, and you're, you're upset now. I uh, expected three arguments, found one. Tell me more. You're not telling me more. I think I need one more of these uh, for this thing, impull for results. Uh, okay, so you're not gonna be a self, you're gonna be in um, a request task like that. Uh, all right, let's fix this really quickly. Oh, cannot find value body in this scope. Where did I have body? Oh, fat, this is body. Okay. I don't need this at all because we're going to send now a uh, request task. Uh, okay. Priority. That's going to be, um, do we have access to like a self or something? Uh, we have a from request. Okay. That got rid of that error because I was trying to do self, I think on it. Uh, async from request has incompatible. Okay, I'll uh, we'll we'll deal with that in a second. So, request task. Uh, we have request. I have this validate request task. This is for that. I don't think I can do this as like with a with a self. I don't think you'll be. Yeah, we can't we can't do that. So I can't just get access to self uh, from this. But I do have this task here. Okay, so we can use you. So we'll do task dot priority. Task dot uh, title, and we can unwrap because we absolutely know that you're there because we validated it. And task dot description. Okay. Okay. Now, what are you upset about? Um, method from request has an incompatible type for trait expected function pointer. Uh, function request. Uh, result. Uh, validate. Create task. Oh, can this not? Does this have to be a self on it? I don't remember, I thought, I thought I could return whatever I want. I forget though. I changed the output type to match the trait. Uh, oh, the so this does need to be a validate create task. So it needs to be this thing. Well, then never mind. Okay, you need to be that, uh, which means you are oh can i can i make you not a an option then it's 
find out. Yeah, this needs to be so expected. So if this is required with missing task title, I absolutely need to have an option here, unfortunately. Uh, which I guess just means that we'll have to update uh, where we use it. So this will be just okay with the task that we're passing on through. Okay, that, that's, that's how we'll work it. Now this technically works now. So back into create task, I should be able to task, okay, validate create task. We get the task here in our extractor. Uh, and let's re-enable all of these. Okay, so task. Uh, priority set. Uh, this is going to be just task.priority. This is going to be task.title, but uh, we need to unwrap you because you're an option. Uh, description is task.description. Everything else is okay. Uh, we created. Um, Mismatch types expected. I guess let's take away the, un the to do also. Hey, okay, no error messages. Let's uh, let's see if this works now. So we're gonna rerun our tests. Hey, and all three passed. Okay, so we're now able to successfully create a task. Uh, we can handle creating a task when we're not logged in, uh, or rather we are, don't allow them to create the task when they're log, not logged in. And if we like don't pass in like a string or something, uh, that, that also successfully um, uh, errors out. So perfect. Uh, before I do anything else, I do want to handle some of these errors though. So unused imports, bytes, we don't need that. Uh, we don't need this into response. Uh, or this request task. Uh, I like to pull all the uses together. Okay. Uh, this state, we're not using it, but it's part of this. Um, uh, it's part of this. So I'm just going to underscore that. Uh, okay. Response. We don't need this response. Uh, we don't need this request task here either. Okay, uh, no more errors. Let's uh, rerun the tests again. And I would imagine they're still going to pass. Excellent, they do. Uh, which one more thing before we do anything else. Let's go find this one, remove the only on it and make sure that everything still works. And okay, everything, everything is still working. We're able to still do all of our user cred stuff and the ta the creating of the task. Okay, excellent. Uh, well, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that the, this worked out and uh, I look forward to the next one, which is gonna be getting all tasks. Uh, I will see you then and bye.